Welcome to the Dear Professor series, where college students who take courses online speak their minds. I am your host and e-learning strategist, Dr. Kelly Alston, who is honored to have a conversation with today's guest as she sheds light on her experiences as an online student. I've been teaching online since 2004 and made the tough decision to obtain my PhD through an online program. So I've been both an online instructor and an online student. As a result, I know that there are some wonderful things happening with online programs, as well as some not so wonderful things going on. The purpose of this series is to help professors and students experience a more fulfilling online learning environment by allowing students to reveal their needs and pet peeves. My hope is that this information will support professors in making the necessary changes or adjustments in the design and delivery of their online courses, which should ultimately enhance student success and satisfaction with distance education. So if you're interested in hearing what students have to say about their lived experiences online, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that every Wednesday at 8 p.m., the latest episode will come straight to you. Also, feel free to comment about anything said and ask questions. If you're listening via a podcast platform, please be sure to follow and rate the series so that your interest and opinion of the show are made known. Today, I am so honored to be sharing this time and space with Miss Larray Christie. Hello. Larray, how are you doing this evening? Hi, Professor Austin. I'm doing wonderfully and amazing and beautiful on this sunny Tuesday. Um, I'm excited to get started with you. That's wonderful. I'm glad you had some sunshine today. We had lots of rain and clouds. In North Carolina, where oh are you? God. I'm in I'm in Delaware, so I'm on the on the northern the the upstate part of, of the country. So, um, glad to know that you're doing good and you're safe and everything, though. Yeah. So, Larray, tell us a little bit about yourself. So, I'm Larray. I'm a senior at North Carolina Central University. I'm an early childhood education major with a minor in child development, um, but to get into the exciting part about me, I have an alter ego, and my alter ego is an inspiring artist, model, traveler, traveler and influencer. Um, on Instagram, I make cute little reels like Get Ready With Me's, and then um, I go on trips. I take trips and vlog them. I also do acrylic paintings and things like that. And I just got a job as a flight attendant that I'm pretty excited about. So um, teaching may just have to put, I might just have to put a pin in that. But um, I'm definitely here to help students and, and help students grow and reach their goals and that's a little bit about me and yes okay so I'm excited I did not know all of this about you Larray let's talk about it for a minute so on Instagram you are doing get you said get get ready with me videos yes I do like get ready with me videos I like to I like to base my videos around fashion and lifestyle so um, in the fashion sense, I just kind of, people like to see the process of things. So I start from the beginning, right. from the shoes, to the pants, to the jewelry, to the perfume you're wearing. So I just vlog that and make it into like a 10 second video and people, people love it. So how long have you been doing that? I just started doing that. Um, I, I always thought that it was something that I couldn't do because I work in the education field and social media can be kind of a tricky thing for educators because we're we're expected to maintain this image inside and outside the classroom. But I've been finding ways to do it appropriately and in a way that engages with a younger crowd too. So you you said that you also go on trips and you uh, do TikTok videos about the trips? 
Yes, ma'am. Um, so what's my- the last trip that you TikToked about? <laughs> my last trip, my last trip, I did a reel in Puerto Rico, in Old San Juan, Puerto Rico, and it went viral. That thing got 2.8 million views. So, hey, right. 2.8 million views. Yes. So Ooh, that's yes. a round of applause. Yes, and it got like a hundred, a hundred fifty k likes. So, oh I'm, my goodness! Yeah, I feel, I feel good about that because for the longest, it felt like I was creating content and nobody was seeing me or nobody cared. But I still enjoy doing it anyway. But right. now it definitely paid off, so I'm happy about that. Okay, so. You're a TikToker. <laughs> I'm a I'm an Instagrammer. What's crazy is I can't get into the TikTok. Oh, I, it's not TikTok, it's Instagram. Yes, on Instagram. Oh, you can say reels. Yes. I just realized you said reels. I just immediately thought TikTok. Okay. Yes. So you're on IG and then you're about to be in the friendly skies. Tell us about how did you become a flight attendant or what's going on with that? I am. It was a pretty competitive process, but it's something that I always dreamed of doing. I've had multiple dreams over the course of my lifetime, honestly. I've dreamed about being a nurse. Uh, We'll talk more about that later. I had dreams about being a flight attendant, a traveler. I dreamed about being a model. I think every girl dreams that, being a high Mm -hmm. fashion model. But um, being a traveler was something that I always enjoyed, especially as a kid, just going to the beach with my family or just little trips like that. I think it's important to put yourself in new environments. That's when you definitely grow as a person and experience the world in entirety. So um, I went through like three rounds of interviews. They flew me out. They flew me out from Delaware to Dallas for an interview. And I felt so special and And it's honestly a very rigorous process. So I was excited about that when I got the job. So can you tell us which airline or you have to keep it a secret? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Which one? Yes, ma'am. You have to keep it a secret. Oh, wait. What was the secret? I'm sorry. Can you you tell us which airline or do you have to keep it a secret? Oh, oh, no. Um, It's with American Airlines. Okay. Yes. Yes. Ain't no spirit over here. But... (laughs) But honestly, I ain't even going front. I ain't even going front. I did apply to Siri. I was trying to get my foot in. I was trying to get in where I fit in. Okay. Okay, Lorraine, you are such a joy. Okay, now let's talk about this for a minute. I mean, we're supposed to be talking about online classes, but this is just too interesting. So if you are a flight attendant and you are a student pursuing an early childhood education degree, how did you, how do those mesh like they how are don't. you they don't and honestly it's in the lord's hands i'm i'm hoping that somehow some way through online education i'll be able to live a flexible lifestyle that that will allow me to do both but if we're if we're looking at it from the outside looking in it's it's not cohesive so uh, i'm just really hoping that it works out Okay, so let's talk about these online courses. What is your general experience with taking courses online? Yes, ma'am. I've had a wonderful experience with online courses. Um, Honestly, I don't really have too much bad things to say about online courses because they they have allowed me to be here today and speak with you today and get get opportunities as a flight attendant and have opportunities to travel. So being in online classes gives me the flexibility and the freedom to do what I do. So when did you start taking online classes? I've been taking online classes ever since COVID. But I started pursuing an online degree ever since, i say, about two years ago, so in 2021. Okay. And what degree was that? An early childhood education degree. But originally, okay. I, was, I was doing... <laughs> Go ahead. I was waiting to see if you were going to tell us. Yes, I'm going to pull them skeletons out the closet. I was okay. a former nursing major, and that didn't work out the way I imagined, but it worked out the way it was meant to be because I'm here standing as an, an educator, 
and I'm fulfilling my life's purpose this way. And I think honestly, both fields are kind of similar in the sense that they help people and, and right, help people right. achieve goals, whether they, they be academic goals or, or health goals. So I'm just happy to help and, and be here for people. Okay, so if you were to rate your experience with online courses on a scale of one to 10, with 10 being outstanding and one being horrific, what rating would you give and why? So one to 10, no sevens. Sevens are too safe. Sevens are for safe people. I'm not safe. I am a very honest person and I'm going to honestly give it an eight. An eight. So would you say an eight is a B, like 80%? I would say eight is a eight is a great. <laughs> it ain't a it ain't a phenomenal. It ain't a uh, exquisite. It ain't a excellent. It's it's just a great. Okay, okay, that's 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 well, that's fine. Yeah. Now let's talk about your needs as an online student. A need is defined as something you require because it is essential or very important. When you click on the online course or courses that you're enrolled in right now. What do you require or desire to be successful? I All I ask from my professors is that you have a nice, organized layout for the course. And I feel like that ain't asking for too much. You, right. have, you have students, and some of these students are older and don't know how to, how to navigate technology. So I can only imagine the struggle they have to go through to find submission sites for assignments and to find folders to to do the assignments. So just having an unorganized uh, class is really setting students up for failure. Mm-hmm. Very good point. Did you have another need? Another need would be a need for personality. I think that I think that in an online environment, it doesn't really create the space to share much about ourselves. Some professors will have introduction discussion boards or times to introduce yourself through class meetings. But I think just having having a voice as a professor and letting us know that you're still an actual person at the end of the day is helpful in, in being relatable to students too. So um, it makes me interested in the class. I like reading the introductions, too, because I want to learn about who's teaching me. And I think that to be a teacher is to be a leader. And I don't want to be led by someone I don't even know. Oh, Lorray, these are so good. Do you have another one? Or is that That's me? it. That's my two needs. Like I said, like a, a eight. Um, an eight's pretty great, and and an eight is minus two from ten. So that was my minus two. That was my two points. Okay, okay, <laughs> good. All right, Lorraine. Well, let me just throw this at you for a minute. Robert Diamond is the author of Designing and Assessing Courses and Curricula, and he asserts that an important source of data that's often overlooked, surprisingly, is the student. He suggests that too many faculty design courses and deliver instruction without knowing and understanding whom they are teaching. In your online courses, have you felt like you were seen and understood? Yes, by you, Professor Austin. By absolutely. <laughs> so how did I make you feel seen and understood, Lorraine? I don't remember what time, at what point you made me feel that way, but I remember how it felt when I felt when I was seen. I remember that it was just a it was just a very, very appreciative moment for me that you were able to see me as a person and see me trying, see me putting through effort, and it just felt really good. Um, whenever someone sees someone as a person, you're you're being relatable, and and that's what I was. Tying back to what I was saying earlier, just being a relatable professor and knowing that life happens and knowing that we're all people and still people at the end of the day. Oh, Lorraine, that was so sweet. Thank you. Now, have you ever had an opportunity in your other courses to feel seen or not? Or I would you- say, I would say not. Um, I, I would say not. Some, some, I'll, some, some professors do have some opportunities to be seen whenever they have the discussion boards and the introductions, like I was saying. But um, 
other times not because only only a few people pause i love it when people when when educators make us reply to the discussions because it is ensuring that the student isn't wasting their time making a whole nice discussion and a whole nice video just for no one to see it or interact with it. So I, I know some students, I might get a lot of heat from that. I know that might be an unpopular opinion, but I actually like it when when professors make us reply to the discussion boards because they're easy grade, number one. Like, it's easy to talk to people and say, hey, girl, hey, what's up? That's all you got to do. And number two, it's just make, it's making people feel seen. That's And that's what it's about, building a, a living, um, I'm, well, building a, a live learning community. Right. And so what about the times when you don't feel seen and understood? How does that impact your learning? It just, it, it makes my effort decrease. It, 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 I experience withdrawal. I start withdrawing myself. I start uh, undermining my potential. I know I can do better, but I don't do better because I know you don't care. Or I know, I know you're going to give me the 100 anyway, no matter what I submit, I can submit um, usually I, I always strive for A's, but I could submit a paper that was worth a B and I know you're going to give me the hundred A for it anyway. And mm. I'm going about my day. Oh my. Well, let me ask you something that I think that you would be an expert on. Let's talk about when you're taking an online course and the instructor is lecturing for a long time. Oh my God. How, how do you feel about that? I I feel very strongly uh, against that. I think that it doesn't engage your students. I think lecturing is all good when you can do it in an organized fashion too. And just having moments of clarity somewhere in there would be great or moments for conversation for students would be great. Like having lectures and then opening the mic to students to have input or share experiences. And that's where you learn the most is through experiences of other people. Yes, indeed. Well, now it's time for us to share your pet peeves. Oh my now, God. let me tell you what a pet peeve, well, not you, I'm sure you know what it is, but let's share with the uh, listeners what a pet peeve is in case they've never heard that phrase before. It is a minor annoyance that an individual finds particularly irritating, something that bothers you more than it bothers others. So your pet peeve may not be someone else's and that's okay. Share with us what really annoys you when it comes to online courses, Lorraine. What are your pet peeves? Something, not to be a drama queen, but something that I find incredibly inconsiderate is when students ask personal questions on the live session for the class. For example, if class starts and um, the lecture, we go on about our lesson, uh, yada, 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 class ends. We're, we're, we're inching towards the end of class and, and the, the teacher opens up like, okay, before we log off for the class, does anyone have any questions about anything? And then someone chimes in like, oh, yes, I have a question about that assignment I submitted yesterday. Did you get my email? Um, I don't know if you've seen it, but like that is what office hours are for. You're wasting all of our time making us sit there and listen to you and your personal problem that has nothing to do with us. So I think office hours are are something that you need to do. <laughs> Right. And so is that your only pet peeve? Another pet peeve was, as we were saying before, just having professors aimlessly and endlessly ramble and talk as if someone's actually listening to them. You cannot seriously think we've sat here and talked and listened to you talk for an hour straight. Mm. You, like, let's be for real. Are you going to sit there and listen to someone talk for an hour straight with a monotone? I'm talking like this the whole time and I have no, you sound like a robot. No one's listening. So, so to improve that, what should they do again? Tell them, Lorraine. Just having like an ener energy, having energy and, and having some expression and some different, some different types of activities embedded into your lesson and 
having having opportunities for students to voice themselves and voice their thoughts would be very helpful in engaging students. Yeah, so you have given us some really good pet peeves and needs on this here session. So yes. what we have to do now is go to our Dear Professor segment where you get the opportunity to share your heart with the fellow professor that you have in mind. Imagine there's an online bulletin board with sticky notes or messages from students to professors. What is the note you would leave one of your online college professors? Dear Professor, I love you as a person. You are bright, radiant, and an overall phenomenal woman. Thank you for inviting me to share and giving me a platform to speak and be seen. And you truly have a gift that brings people together. And dear your future students, come hard or don't come at all. Because this woman does not play. She is not for the games. Ooh, what a lively message for that. For XO, 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 Lorraine. you are magnetic, okay? Yes, and I wonder if we can guess the professor. Hmm, it's a mystery. Is that a riddle, Lorraine? Oh my gosh, I think that is more of a um, more of a figurative form of speech. Um, yeah. I think- oh my goodness. Well, Lorraine, let me let me share your takeaways, or well, my takeaways, I should say, from today's conversation. So, when Lorraine, when you're taking courses, you want that course to be organized. Yes, you should ma'am. be able to find what you need to find. You need to know where the submission button is, the folders, everything should be organized. Yes, also, ma'am. you want your professor to have some personality. Mm-hmm. You enjoy uh, learning about them through the intro that they yes. might give so that you know that they're a human as well on the other side of that computer. Yes, my I add, you have a lovely intro. I loved your intro. I sat there and read it from top to bottom. I was like, ooh, look, Dad, look at my professor intro. She's so pretty. She shared uh, about herself. And it felt it felt good. Like, I felt like I was knowing. I, I already knew you before I even met you. And, right. Yes. And so I really enjoyed those. And, and you... You made me see and appreciate those because now I'm going to look for them in my future classes. I'm like, where's your intro? I spoiled it for everybody. Yes. Like, they're not, like they ain't doing it like you. They, they ain't doing their big one like you. Oh, and my then, goodness, y'all. I did not pay her to say this. Okay. Yeah, this ain't, this ain't sponsored. This is coming straight right, from right. heart. It's all love. Oh, my goodness. So, I was accurate in my takeaways. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. Yes. So, Lorraine, when are you planning to graduate now that you're going to be a flight attendant? I graduate in December 2024, so I will see you then, and you'll see me across the stage then. I'm, I'm super excited for that moment. Oh, well, I know it's the end of the semester, and you probably have major assignments due and exams coming up. So I truly appreciate you spending your precious time with me this evening, Lorraine, because you could have been making an IG reel right now. <laughs> well, thank you. I, look, I wouldn't rather have spent my time nowhere else doing nothing else. Thank you for giving me the time of day and, and giving me this opportunity to share and, and interact with you. Thank you again. It's always a pleasure speaking with you, Dr. Austin. Oh, thank you, Lorray. I wish you well as you complete your studies and as you fly the friendly skies with American Airlines. I know that it's a hard job to get. Yes. yes. And so I know you had to pass a lot of tests, didn't you? Yes, get I did. It was very, I know. very competitive. It was even uh, true. If you think getting into the nursing program was hard, try to be a flight attendant. <laughs> oh, so Lorray, let's backtrack for a minute. Yeah. Okay, something we didn't talk about now that you spoke of that nursing degree. So what made you switch from nursing to early childhood? Just the, so I went into nursing thinking, okay, this is going to be, it's a very rewarding field and the money. And I think as black women, they push those healthcare careers on us like the plague. Like there's nothing else better we can do. And, and I went along with it. So um, I grew to dislike it. I had a true 
I, I fell out of love with it. Whatever, whatever interest I had was gone mm-hmm. by the end of it. I hated going to the hospital. It was always a negative environment. Whoever's in the hospital doesn't want to be in the hospital. So everyone there doesn't want to be there. So I never, and I'm too positive of a person for that. It was, it was helpful to, to lighten people's day and be the reason for people to smile. But, but that takes a toll on you. And and it's such a different setting than a classroom environment compared to, to students who are coming in there bright, bright eyed and ready to learn and bubbly. It's just such a different, different dynamic. So, um, that was that was basically my reason for switching. Just just having a passion elsewhere and, and finding a better environment for me to thrive in and to make a difference in. Because they both are pretty similar in helping people, but right. I feel like I was a better help to students who really need me. So, are you gonna leave those students to fly to friendly skies? I just want a final verdict on that. <laughs> oh, that's difficult. That's that. That's a hard question because I am trying to graduate. Like I, I've been in this too long. Like with the nursing and the uh, the um the major switch, I'm going on my my fifth year in college. So you know I'm ready to hurry up and get on out of here. So um to stay tuned on that, I, I don't got an answer for you just yet. But okay. it is it is looking like uh, being a flight attendant has always been a dream of mine. So I we you might just see me in the sky. I don't know. Maybe you can teach the children up in the sky. How about that? I can. I can. I'll still be making people smile up there. You know what? This is the century where you can do whatever you want, whenever you want, change careers if you want. You don't have to do something for 30 years. Okay. Like you said, you can do IG Reels. You can fly to friendly skies and come on right. down to earth and teach the children. How about that? Yes. Hopefully I meet some friendly <laughs> some friendly first class people and, right, and make one right. of them smile. And hopefully um, that that will even put me put me in an even better position or even more opportunity. So there's just there's just opportunities everywhere, but a big opportunity for me right now is going to be up in the air. So I'm excited about that. Well, Lorraine, I have enjoyed you and I just want to thank everyone for joining us for this wonderful conversation that we had. Remember to comment, like, and share, follow, and also subscribe. I look forward to spending time with you next week on the Dear Professor series, where college students who take courses online speak their minds. Bye-bye.